Kai? We on? Okay, cool. <clears throat> all right, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Machakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, and that was a great millstone. And peace and salutations to the elect. Okay, uh, we're uh, GMS Dallas, uh, uh brothers. Okay, Elder Yatazak is here, and I'm the brother I'm from GMS Dallas. And uh, what we're going to do is continue on the uh series that we've been doing, and uh, uh, first Samuel, and we finished first Samuel, so now we're doing second Samuel. And uh, the last uh lesson that we did was uh based off of uh, chapter two, and pretty much when you read about chapter two, it goes into how. Um, there was a, a, a the anointing or the the uh, public recognition of David, you know, being king over Judah, right after Saul's death. And uh, what happened is, you know, the rivalry between the captain of David's host, which was Joab, and the rivalry of the captain of Saul's host, which was Abner, pretty much uh, climaxed into. A, uh, a skirmish, you know, a, uh, um, uh, a, com a conflict that, you know, ended up having uh, a few hundred of, of Saul's men or a few hundred of Abner's men killed and only a handful of David's men killed, okay, which kind of resembling uh, was what we're going to go into in, uh, in chapter three, okay? And so keep in mind that during the time of Saul's death up until what we're reading right now was seven years. Okay. It was seven years that's transpired. And what we're going to do is continue reading on in chapter three. Um, again, we left off in chapter two. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start second Samuel chapter three, verse one. It says, now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, but David waxed stronger and stronger and the house of Saul Wax weaker and weaker. Now and keep in mind, keep in mind that this, this is a this is another situation where Israel was fighting against Israel, mm -hmm. just like now. There's nothing new under the sun. You know, it's a time for peace. It's a time for war. And right now, spiritually, the uh, uh, the house of Saul and the house of David is at war with each other, and it's to fulfill the will of the heavenly Father, pursuant to Romans chapter eleven. You know, you got it. Kind. Yep. <clears throat> and. Um, it says, verse two, and unto David were sons born in Hebron, and his firstborn was Ammon. Now, actually, before I go into this, um, to back up your point, Zaquan, I want to get this um, scripture in Amos, you know, because uh, it talks about the restoration of Israel. And we went into the book of Amos, too. But just to back up your point. This is Amos chapter 9, verse, in verse 11. It says, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. So currently we're seeing the, um, the, uh, the tabernacle of David okay, being built up, the house of David being built up with the elect, okay, because David had those who were loyal to him, OK, and then uh, there, there were those who were loyal to 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 Saul, but there were those who were loyal to David that genuinely wanted to serve uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And those are the ones that in these days are being risen up. OK, and and, and serving the Lord in these times. OK, um, because ultimately, you know, we know that the that the southern kingdom was, you know, taken off of the throne and we were removed. But now what we're seeing is spiritually. The Lord is building that house back up. OK, um, so continuing on in verse two, it says, and unto David were sons born in Hebron and his firstborn was Ammon of Ahinoam, the Jezreelitis, uh, and his second Chiliab of Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmel, uh, Carmelite. Um, and I guess we can get some of these some of these definitions of these names here. Right, because I was gonna say, um, when when uh, it, it mentions how when David, uh, as David was conquering, he was adding wives, uh, he was adding wives to his harems. You know what I'm saying? So some of those, uh, some of those wives, uh, may have been heathen wives. You know what I'm saying? Because he was making deals with the neighboring, uh, with the neighboring nations. 
you know, mm-hmm. in order to in order to uh expand his rulership, you know. So yeah. let's, let's 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 confirm it. Let's mm-hmm. confirm it. But you know, you got you got uh Israelites out there that think that only a Israelite woman, only a black woman, they won't even say Israelite, only a black woman can birth an Israelite child when according to the scriptures it says that the progenitor is the father. It's mm-hmm. it's, it's all about the seed. You know what right. I'm saying? A, a, a woman can't have a baby without a man seed. That's why you got sperm banks. Right. They, 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 they don't got ovary banks. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, let's just be real. Yeah. Go ahead. Con. So, uh, Amnon is uh, Strong's age 55. Uh, um, Amon one. Amon one. And uh, basically, it's like, uh, uh, you know, Amon, you know, is, is like faith or belief right um and so this is kind of like i would say like the plural version of it which would be faithful um and this is the first son of uh <clears throat> of david you know first firstborn son of david which <laughs> you know we read when you keep keep reading he turned out to be uh you know pretty much a scumbag <laughs> you know what I'm saying just to be honest but um and that shows you man like well we, we say it we've said it a few times you know the 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 son you know just because you have a son doesn't mean that he's gonna be you know uh you know a righteous you know prophet you know a great man in Israel if you if you yourself you know have a son and you're a prophet that doesn't mean that your son is gonna follow in your stead look at the sons of Eli you know, look at uh, Absalom, David's son. He rebelled against him, right? Look at uh, Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. Look at look at look at Adam and Solomon rebelling against the Most High. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, they they they, they, <laughs> they rebel. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Both of them messed off a kingdom. Yep. You know, so that 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 that's, that that falls in that category too. Mm-hmm. You know. Yep. Yep. So, so um, let me see here. Son of a, uh, oh, right. I'm going to reverse two again. Unto David were sons born in Hebron, which we know Hebron was a city that David was ruling in first um, for those first seven years. It says, and his firstborn was Amnon, uh, the, the son of Ahinoam, the Jezreelite. So this is one of uh, David's uh, women that he, you know, had a baby with. Right. And then uh, it says the second son, he had was a uh, Ch- Chiliab, okay. Um, now you see how it names the sons. It doesn't name the uh, the daughters in this in this deal here. It just names the sons, right? He had daughters too, but it just names the sons right here. Right. Says, why? Why? Because the sons carry on the legacy. You see, mm-hmm. a woman a woman is always going to be under uh, her father's name or her husband's name. Mm-hmm. There's always, I would say she's either, I would say she, she, she holds her father's legacy until she holds her husband's. You, and ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To, 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 to be able to have a daughter to give to a man of the Lord, man, that's, that, that's a gift for both sides. Mm. You know? Okay. This, 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 this notion, I would say, I, I, I know that uh, the, the curses is on, but that's what I'm saying. That was one of the, the, biggest thing Satan did was to turn Adam Adam and Eve against each other and divide asunder what uh what he put together but here it is everybody divided you know mm-hmm. you got it Con. yep so that second son named uh Kala Abba okay which is a compound word um Kala is um like or as right when you have Ka at the beginning of the word it's like or as and then um, Abba is father, right? So that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much the breakdown of that name, like his father. Um, and then um, the third it says was Absalom, which we know about Absalom. You know, we've read about Absalom. That's a uh, the rebellious son. <laughs> mm-hmm. He was known as the rebellious, the rebellious son of uh of uh David. Let's go ahead and get his name meaning. Okay, Strong's H53, Abba Yah, uh, excuse me, Abba Yah Shalawam. Okay, Abba Yah Shalawam, which is uh uh we know Abba, which is father, 
And then Yah at the end of the word is my, right? So my father and then uh, Shalom is peace, right? So my father is peace, right? That's that's the, the breakdown, okay? Um, and so, yeah, he was a rebellious son, but we'll, we'll get into that uh, as we continue on in the, in, the, in the book. And then he had a couple more sons. Um, okay, Abalon, Absalom was the son of uh, uh, Makkah, the daughter of uh, Talmai, the king of Geshur. Okay. And um, did you want me to look into this? Let me see who, who Makkah was, if she was, uh, who, who, who her father was. Um, Makkah or Ma'ika. Um, let's see here. The daughter of the king of Talmai of Geshur. Okay. So let's see who the king of Talmai of Geshur was real quick. Um, daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. Okay, Thalamia. Okay, uh, son of Amihud, king of Geshur. Later, king of Geshur himself, the father. So, uh, I, I I don't know if it was uh if it was if he was mentioned before this. So I'd have to do some more. Some yeah. more deep diving and seeing he, he wasn't mentioned before this. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure they he this. I'm pretty yeah. sure they this. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That's the whole yeah. that's the whole point of rulership is to make those unions with other nations. You know what I'm saying for everything to run smooth, which is what Solomon excelled at. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. All Solomon's wives were not Israelites, mm -hmm. but all his children were. Right. All David's wives are not Israelites. All his children were. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with ja with Jacob. You know what I'm saying? They 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 wasn't Israelites then. You know what I'm saying? But you know, he had four different he had four wives, but all those children were Israelites. Yep. Jacobites, so to speak. Yep. So you Jacobites. can understand. You yep. got it. That's right. <clears throat> yep. So uh, it says the fourth uh, is uh, Adonijah, which I'm pretty sure I can break that down just by looking at it. I don't. Uh, Adun, Adunya Yahweh, you know, which would be um, my Lord is Yahweh, right? Uh, the son of Haggith and the fifth, uh, Shep, Shep, Shephatiah, the son of Abital. Now let's look up. And these are all different women. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. But then when you bring this up, the woman, the woman, they'll say, oh, you're not King David. You're not him. You're not him. <laughs> well, King David wasn't the only one with multiple. Well, wives. The, pro the, the prophecy say we will be like David. You know right. what I'm saying? So yeah. right now it's just not expedient to do all that. Because right now, right now, if you got five wives, you got five women that ain't with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Murmuring behind your back and talking shit, probably spitting in your food. <laughs> Man. Yeah. yeah. You know it what I'm saying? The yeah. mindset, the mindset ain't there for us or them to yeah. pull it off. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 bro, you in captivity, and yeah. I know in captivity when we was in Egypt, you know, it said that we continued to multiply. Yeah, you know, but that's what I'm saying. You still in captivity, so you know you got to just be smart about it. Yep. I say, yeah, right now, right now ain't the time. Right now ain't the time to have four women on their period under the same roof. <laughs> and David had more than one. He he had he had more than one a uh, one bedroom apartment man yeah that's, you know? that's 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 for that's for a man with substance man you can't yeah. be yeah i will say i'll i'll guarantee you if you're in a warehouse with multiple wives that shit is uncomfortable at times <laughs> absolutely absolutely so this uh this last son here uh strong's age 8203 uh shapatia shapatia which we know shapat is judgment right to judge to plead and then Yah is abbreviated way to say Yahweh. All right. So uh, you could say Yahweh has judged, you know, or, or Yahweh is my judge. Right. So. Um, so those are the sons of David. Right. And um, it might be. Oh, there was one more. Uh, the sixth was uh, Ithram by uh, Elga, David's wife. These were born to David in Hebron. Let me just go ahead and get that one for the sake of. Finishing that out, Strong's age thirty five oh seven, Yathrai, uh, excuse me, Yathrayim, Yathrayim, okay. It says um, 
uh, a compound word. Okay, yathar, which is to rest, and then I'm is people. Okay, um, so also uh, yathar can be uh, remnant, residue, uh, excellency, you know, right? And then I'm is people or nation, so uh, prophet of the people. Okay, so I'm going to say that again, yathar, I'm, yathar, I'm, okay? It's a compound word. All right, so those are the uh, sons of David. And uh, continuing on in verse six, it says, and it came to pass while there um, while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, that Abner made himself strong for the house of Saul. So he was holding it down because <clears throat> remember, Abner, you know, even though Saul was dead, he still made Ishbosheth, which was Saul's son, uh, the king, you know, over Israel for those for those for those uh, for that time period. Right. And so it says in verse seven, and Saul had a concubine whose name was Rizpah, the daughter of uh, Aiah, and Ishbosheth said unto Abner, Wherefore hast thou gone in unto my father's concubine? Right. So you know Saul was dead, and you know he had uh, you know other wild, like you know he may have had some some badass you know concubines. You know what I'm saying that was just there, like damn, okay. And Abner, you know, he went, he went in and he went into one of them. He was dealing with one of them, you know what I'm saying? Because Saul was dead. And, and you know, and Ishbosheth was like, yo, 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 hey, bro, what, 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 like, why are you going, why are you dealing with my, with my dad's concubine, man? You know, you know, Ab, uh, uh, Ishbosheth tried to charge him up. Now, before I read, well, you know what? Uh, I'm going to read it in the King James. But then I'm going to go back and read an NLT because it's a little bit easier to understand his response. OK, verse eight, it says, then was Abner very wroth for the words of Ishbosheth and said, am I a dog's head, which against Judah do show kindness this day unto the house of Saul, thy father, to his brethren and to his friends that have not delivered thee into the hand of David? that thou chargest me today with a fault concerning this woman, right? So basically in layman's terms, he was like, yo, man, I'm taking care of you. I'm, I'm preserving your life from David and you charging me up about this, about this chick, you know, like, and, and I'm going to read it in the NLT. I don't know why it's, uh, there we go. I'm reading the NLT. So, it, you know, it'll make a little bit more sense. Okay. Second uh, Samuel chapter three and eight and Abner was furious. Am I some Judean dog to be kicked around like this? He shouted. After all I have done for your father, Saul, and his family and friends by not handling you over to David. Is this my reward that you find handing you over to David? Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Handing you handing you over to David. Is this my reward that you find fault with me about this woman? It says, verse nine. May God, may the most high strike me and even kill me if I don't do everything I can to help David get what the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shai, has promised him. I'm going to take Saul's kingdom and give it to David. I will establish the throne of David over Israel as well as Judah all the way from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south. You see, so um, I got a precept to that. But uh, if you want to speak on that, Zaquan, uh, Baba Kushar, feel free. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's 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 plain. That's plain. But that's, that just goes to show you. That just goes uh, uh, to show you that the Lord has the angels controlling the minds of men. You know, he went from uh, hardcore. He went from hardcore uh, 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 of the house of Saul to being disrespected you know what i'm saying to the point to where that's what changed the tide you know because the civil war between israel lasted for a couple years you know what i'm saying and that was a huge turning point yep and it's yep. always uh, it was, it, 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 it's always a woman involved that, that's what i was thinking about too i, was, <laughs> I didn't want to say it but i was thinking about that when i was when i was reading over, uh, reading over it earlier i was like man it, you know, basically, uh, you know, when we read up, you know, we, when we continue reading, basically he, uh, uh, you know, he got himself jacked up over a woman, man. 
you know? Let me get this, uh, this scripture here in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 15, verses, uh, verse 1. It says, a soft, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger, you know? And, <laughs> and uh, basically, Ishboshev, he didn't really have a, la a leg to stand on, man. You know, his main, the main guy that, that you know, was protecting him, if you will, uh, the one, the main guy that was holding him down, which was Abner, okay, which Abner was uh, uh, Saul's uh, cousin, right? Uh, Abner was basically looking, looking over, he was looking after uh, his his cousin's son, Ishbosheth, you see? And so when, he, when, when, you know, when Ishbosheth was asking him, like, yo, what's going on? Like, why are you dealing with my father's concubine? That was just the straw that broke the camel's back, you know, for Abner. He's like, man, what the hell am I over here protecting this guy for <clears throat> when he ain't even grateful, you know? Right. And um, uh, the other scripture yeah, I want to Yeah, because technically since Saul was dead, then it was cool. <laughs> if you want to be technical, you know, it might that might strike a few nerves, but it's true. You know what I'm saying? It's true, you know, and she was just a concubine anyway, you know. But uh, anyway, next scripture I wanted to get was uh, Proverbs. Actually, it's in the next chapter. Okay. Uh, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 9. It says, and this is pertaining to uh, basically how um, Abner's mind was turned towards helping David. He said, uh, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Right. <clears throat> so, you know, pretty much what we're going to see is Abner now, instead of, you know, being against the house of David, now he's going to want to uh, join, you know what I'm saying, the, the two houses together. Right. right. Which so, is the Lord's will to have Israel all together anyway. Right. You know what yep. I'm saying? But it's, but it had, but it's, it had to be war first. Kind. Yep, that's right. So uh, we read verses uh, nine and ten in the NLT. Um, so we're going to continue on in the uh, KJV in verse verse eleven, Second Samuel three and eleven. It says, "And he could not answer Abner a word again, because he feared him. So he didn't want to say nothing else. He's like, man, damn, I already done jacked myself up. Let me just, let me just, close, let me just shut my mouth, right." And uh, verse 12. Like, then, Quit while you're behind. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's like that. Well, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, man, this nigga might just kill me on the spot. Let me just shut up real quick. <laughs> um, verse 12, it says, and Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf, saying, "Who, whose is the land? Saying also, make thy league with me, and behold, my hand shall be with thee to bring about <clears throat> all Israel unto thee. So he, Abner was like, look, hey, David, you know, you know, we've been, we've been, you know, at odds long enough. You know what I'm saying? It's obvious the people, you know, they, they want to deal with you. So look, just make a league with me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to, and I'm going to bring those that are loyal to me, the rest of Israel, I'm going to bring it, bring them to you. You know, and in verse 13, it says, uh, this is David's response. And he said, well, I will make a league with thee, but one thing I require, uh, one thing I require of thee, that is, thou shalt not see my face except thou first bring Michael, Saul's daughter, uh, when thou comest to see my face. So he was, he was referring to, um, uh, you know, Saul's daughter that he, the first, the first um, wife, if you will, that that, uh, that David had, you know, was Michael, Saul's daughter. And this whole time while uh, while David was fleeing from Saul, remember, you know, when David first fled, he, you know, he was in the house with Michael and she uh, pretty much, you know, lied to the uh, to the uh, guards or whatever, uh, to the servants of Saul for for David saying, look, you know, David, he got away. You know, what I'm saying he, I, I wouldn't I didn't want him to leave, but he said, look, let me go or I'm gonna kill you. But really, she helped him. You know what I mean? He, she helped him escape. By saying that he was sick and all this other stuff, um, that's and, the one he uh, that's the one he brought all those foreskins back for, right? Yeah, it goes into that. The next verse, okay, yep, yep, verse 14. It says, And David sent messengers, uh, yeah, to Israel. yeah, yep, 
Yep. And, and David sent messengers uh, to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Deliver me my wife, Michael, uh, which I espoused to me for an hundred foreskins of the Philistines. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, David, he put in work for her. He was like, Hell yeah, shit. And Michael loved um, <clears throat> uh, David back when they first, you know, back when David was a young man still. I mean, he was still young here, but, you know, back when he was very young. You know, that was his first wife. Um, it says, uh, verse 15, and uh, Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband. Right, because basically, you know, um, <laughs> basically uh, uh, Saul had allowed for uh, Michael to, to marry somebody. She gave she gave Michael over to somebody else, you know, which really he shouldn't have did that because David was still alive. And, mm -hmm. you know, he never divorced her. You know what I'm saying? But um anyway it says um uh and her oh i'm sorry let me reverse 15 again and ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband even from uh faltiel the son of laish okay this is the man that uh basically had uh married michael after david it said in verse uh, 16 and her husband went with her along weeping behind her to baharim so as um Basically, as uh, Michael was being brought, you know, transported to uh, to uh, Hebron, um, you know, her husband at the time, you know, saying her second husband, if you will, you know, he was <laughs> he didn't want to let her go, man. See what his yeah. name is. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to see uh, uh, Faltiel. Yeah, because, you know, probably going on going on the back of his mind, oh, David, you know, Saul probably going to kill him. You know, this is back when Saul was alive. The, the stuff that was probably going on in his mind was, oh, OK, well, this was this was David's wife. But, you know, he fled. He's a traitor. He's a, you know, whatever, whatever. <clears throat> Saul probably going to find him and kill him anyway. So I'm going to take her. I'm going to scoop her up. You know, um, that's probably what he was thinking. But this is his name. Strong's H6409. Uh, another uh, compound word. Palat Ya'ala. Palat Ya'ala. OK, <clears throat> and uh, Palat is uh, let's see what this word means. Deliverance. OK, um, yep, deliverance. Uh, OK, and uh, and then ya at the end of the word is my and then Allah is power. So so uh, my power delivers. Or I'm sorry, my my uh, deliverer is God. I'll say it like that, you know, because Palat is deliver. You know, my deliverer or my deliverance uh, is God or the most high he says here, the most high delivers. But you it more accurately would be uh, my deliverance is God, you know, or the most high. Um, so let me see. Let's go back here. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> it says the son of Laish of Galim to whom Saul gave Michael in marriage after his mad jealousy had driven David forth as an outlaw. So, you know, Saul pretty much kind of gave, <clears throat> um, he kind of gave uh, uh, Paul Tiel, you know, his, uh, he kind of gave gave her, gave him, excuse me, his daughter um, because he was jealous, you know, of David and he drove, he, you know, he drove him out. So, you know, right. Paul Because it, it, it tell you in the commentary that Saul's plan was to uh, give Michael to David so that she could spy on uh, and snoop on him for for him, you know what I'm saying? But she ended up she ended up being in love with David and siding with her husband. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So she was given to a whole another husband out of spite, which is adultery. You know what yep. I'm saying? Her father uh, her father caused her to commit adultery. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Which she didn't have no options. She didn't have no choice in the matter. You know what I'm saying? But she was delivered from that adulterous situation. By David calling to give her back once he got in the rulership. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So his his name his name actually ended up being a nomen omen that worked out <laughs> for her. You know what I'm saying. She was delivered from him. Yep, yep. That's your pie. <clears throat> um, where we at? Um, verse uh, sixteen. Okay. That was one thing about David. That was one thing about David. If his wife, he was gonna go back and get his wife. Yeah, yeah. This is a month. Go back and get his wives, nigga. <laughs> Man, for real. 
He loved yeah. it. Yeah. yeah even I mean, that's, that's, possessions. <laughs> for real. Yep. That's true. That's true. You know. <clears throat> Uh, versus hey, that's that's how the most that's how we hope the most are gonna come and get us, like mm -hmm. sitting here waiting, damsel in distress, you know what I'm saying, so to speak, you know. And we're waiting for for uh, yeah, how about Shimyao Shai to deliver us, man? That's right, know, from this hellish situation. Um, verse 16, and her husband went along with her, uh, along weeping behind her to buy her rim. Then, yeah. <laughs> That shit must have been embarrassing, man. It's like, uh, was... <laughs> I just want my baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know she was bad. You know, what I'm saying I if, you, if, 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 if he was really a man about, if he was really a man about it, he would have been like, nah, man, I, she already married, man. What you, couple, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He's an Israelite. He knew the law. Yeah, that's yeah. true. He shouldn't. He shouldn't have. You know, he shouldn't have took that deal. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He could, he could have, he could have respectfully. I mean, I know it was the king, but he could have respectfully declined because, hey, the, the Lord is the king, and that's out of pocket, man. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So I was going off like a mother. He put him in, a, he put him in a bad spot. Yep. You know what I'm saying? He's supposed to be put to death. Yeah, yeah. He lucky he didn't get put to death. You know. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It says, "Then said Abner unto him, Go return." <clears throat> and he returned. So Abner had to tell his ass, like, look, bro, just go home, man. It's too late. You had your time. <laughs> yeah. you know? uh, okay, in verse 17, it says, And Abner had communication with the elders of Israel, saying, You sought for David in times past to be king over you. Now then do it. For Yahweh by Shemiah Shai hath spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines and out of the hand of all their enemies. I was saying that prophecy was being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is prophecy being fulfilled. Y'all wanted David as the king. Here you go. You know, right. but this, they, I'll say this. I said, well, y'all wanted Saul to be your king, but this time when you wanted David, the Lord blessed it. Mm -hmm. You know, he gave y'all what y'all wanted because y'all was being carnal when he gave you Saul, but David is a man after the most eyes heart. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that fulfilled that prophecy. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Okay. All right. It says, um, verse 18. Oh, excuse me. Verse 19. And Abner also spake in the ears of Benjamin. And Abner went also to speak in the ears of David in Hebron, <clears throat> all that seemed good to Israel. And that seemed good to the whole house of Benjamin, because it, like Israel was, you know, loyal to Saul, to Saul still. But the most loyal ones to Saul was that, you know, was the word of Benjamites. Benjamin, I'll be right back, bro. Kind. And so, you know, Abner really had to, you know, saying, like, speak to Benjamin separately. Like, you know, like, hey, look, you know, look, listen, you know, this is what this is, what, this is how we're going to move forward. This is what we're going to do. You know what I'm saying? King Saul is dead. And, you know, basically, uh, 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 Abner was the he was the. um the person that everybody looked up to as far as the decision making for uh you know for the for the house of Saul all right <clears throat> so they pretty much went with what Abner said so verse 20 so Abner came to David to Hebron and 20 men with him okay so Abner and 20 men went to uh went to Hebron to you know to the city of David or at that time I'll say the city that David was reigning uh in it says and David made Abner and the men that were with him a feast. So again, like we read in uh Proverbs, um, you know, like we read in Proverbs uh 16 and 7, man, you know, <laughs> you really, you really uh you know want to make your enemies to be at peace with you, man. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't really want to have enemies of your own of your own people now. It's still gonna happen, but it's better to you know to make peace. You know what I'm saying? Oh matter of fact uh, get that scripture in um, Matthew chapter five, man. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> um, here we go. Matthew chapter five and verse nine. It says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of the most high. You see, and David, you know, he, he, he wasn't he wasn't a uh, man that loved you know, seeing his people, you know, get put to death and, you know, seeing all this division going on 
within the house of Israel. He never intended for that to happen. You see, he was pretty much in the middle of it and he was just making sure that he was, you know, covering his own uh, uh, self, man, making sure that he, you know, didn't have blood on his hands, you see. And um, so he made them a feast. It says in verse 21, and Abner said unto David, uh, I will arise and go and will gather all Israel unto my lord, the king, that they may make a league with thee and that thou mayest reign over all that thine heart desireth. <clears throat> and David sent Abner away and he went in peace. Now, that's pretty much the base case, best case scenario. Whereas, you know, if if David was carnal, he would be trying to seek out, uh, you know, basically uh, the kingdom, on, you know, on his own terms and trying to put Abner to death and kill Ishbosheth. And then then it wouldn't have been the same result. You see, but because it wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been prophecy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. David was, I would say, uh, David, David was all about, uh, uh, he, he, he was fulfilling the prophecy. Everything yeah. that the Lord wanted is what David was doing. It yeah. wasn't about him. You see, that's one thing you got to keep in mind. With Saul, with Saul, it was about Saul, his emotions, his feelings, his lack of patience, his lack of faith. David is the complete opposite of all those things. Mm -hmm. You see? Go ahead. Kind. It says in verse uh, 22, and behold, <clears throat> the servants of uh, the servants of David and Joab came from pursuing a troop and brought in a great spoil with them. Uh, which shows you that, you know, Joab, he was always out, you know, making raids and, you know, jacking up this heathen village over here. You know, he was kind of, you know, expanding that territory. Right. It says, but Abner was not with David uh in hebron for he had sent him away <clears throat> and he was gone in peace when joab and all the hosts that was uh with him were come they told joab um saying abner the son of Ner, came to the king and he had sent him away and he is gone in peace so you know when joab heard of the um the news that that abner who was remember abner was the same man that killed uh Joab's brother Azahel, right? In the chapter two, when we reach when you go back and read chapter two. <clears throat> so that vengeance, you know, uh was you know that 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 um you know that vengeance was still you know in Joab's mind of getting that getting his lick back, you know. Still still fresh. Yeah. And so verse 24 says then Joab came to the king and this is when you see how carnal you know joab wasn't a, he wasn't very he wasn't spiritual he didn't rank high in the spiritual category okay he was just you know he was just uh 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 basically a uh skilled individual at war that was loyal to david right um but when it came to spirituality making spiritual decisions you know that wasn't joab's strength you know it says uh it says then joab came to the king and said what hast thou done? Behold, Abner came unto thee. Why is it that thou hast sent him away? And he is quite gone. Knowest, excuse me, thou knowest, Abner, the son of Ner, that he came to deceive thee and to know thy going out and thy coming in and to know all that thou doest. <clears throat> and so, you know, uh, which remember, uh, uh, Joab was, um, you know, again, loyal to David. That was, you know, that was uh, David's nephew. You know what I'm saying? So he was loyal to, to King David. So he wanted to make sure that he preserved King David at all costs. And, um, you know, he, he didn't think that it was a good idea that David sent Abner away in peace, you know. Um, and so, as you can see right here, <laughs> this is what happens next, right? Um, 2 Samuel uh, 3 and 26. And when Joab was come out from David, he sent messengers um, after Abner, which brought him again from the well of Sarah, but David knew it not. So basically what happened was, you know, uh, they, uh, Abner was on his way back, right, to, you know, to the land of Benjamin. And, um, you know, Joab, he sent messengers to catch up to Abner and tell Abner, hey, come back to, you know, come, come back to, to Hebron. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so... 
it says in verse 27, and when Abner was returned to Hebron, because Abner thinking that, hey, look, you know, I just made peace, everything good. Okay, cool. And, they, you know, I'm going to go back to Hebron real quick. Uh, it says, um, verse 27, and when Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly and smote him under the fifth rib. And then he died for the blood of Asahel, his brother. You see? So basically, um, you know, uh, Joab ignored, you know, the, the scripture that talks about vengeance is the most highs and, you know, not to avenge your own self. Mm -hmm. okay? And he went and killed mm -hmm. Abner for and and, you know, he killed Abner sneakily like he like deceived. Yeah, he, he hit him with the let me holler at you. He killed he killed him Esau style. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? If he really if he really wanted to get his get back. Uh, in the righteous way, if he really wanted to get his uh, lick back in the righteous way, he could have. You know what right. I'm saying? That was that was straight up murder. Yeah. You know, I mean, you you sat up there and watched David make a pact with this man. Yep. You know, yep. so your emotions, your emotions no longer matter. Mm -hmm. You know. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah if, if 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 you you could you could have you could have easily done that a, a, a righteous way. Mm -hmm. You know, instead yep. of murdering the man in cold blood. You know, and, and, and that's what I'm saying. And he he had to pay for that. Yep, yep, you got it. Yep, kind. <clears throat> and, and and keep in mind, David he did this behind David's back, so he just basically he was like, "Look, I'm on off this dude," you know, which is a nigga mentality, man. Okay, verse 28 it says, um, "And afterward, let letting you know that it's niggas in the house of David too." Yep, you know yep. what I'm saying. They, they 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 everywhere, you know. It just, it, it, it's just it, it's just that much more. It just that knowing that it's that much more spiritually keeping your head on a swivel. You got to watch out for your own people too, you know. In Romans eleven, the Lord <laughs> King David said, "Let these niggas table be made a snare, man. To hell with these niggas, Lord." <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> man, go ahead. <laughs> uh, it says uh Second Samuel chapter three verse twenty eight, and afterward when David heard it. He said, I and my kingdom are guiltless <clears throat> uh, before the Lord forever from the blood of Abner, the son of Nair. And um, basically, when you fast forward and you read, you know, first uh, Kings. Um, I believe the, the first chapter or the second chapter, you know, some of David's last words to, to Solomon were to tell Solomon, hey, look, you know. I wasn't going to I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to I wasn't going to put Joe at the death for what he did. But make sure that that blood that Abner that Joe shed returns upon uh, his own head for what he did to Abner. You see, because he didn't he didn't let the Lord the He didn't let the will of the how about Shai play out. He went and just killed him for no reason, not for no reason, but for his own. You know, on his own understanding, what the scriptures say, lean not on your own, on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. See? So, um, verse 29, it says, um, verse 29, let it rest on the head of Joab and on all his father's house and let there not fail from the house of Joab. One that hath an issue <clears throat> or one that is a leper or one that leaneth on a staff or one that falleth on the sword or that lacketh bread. So a lot of these people, you know, in Israel, uh, some of them I'll say, you know, some of these people that you see that, you know, they may, uh, uh, you know, be leprous or they may, uh, you know, have an issue in the, uh, in the flesh or they, you know, cripple, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Or, or it's suicidal or, you know, you know, stricken with poverty. Some of them may be descendants of Joab because basically David cursed the <laughs> he cursed the whole house of Joab, man. When he when 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 Joab did this, you see. So uh continuing on, it says in verse 30, so Joab and Abishai, his father, slew Abner. Uh I'm sorry, Abishai, his brother. I'm sorry, I read that wrong. I'll read it again. Second Samuel 3 and 20. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, slew Abner. Because he had slain their brother Asahel 
at Gibeon in the battle. Okay. And uh, verse 31, this is David's response. It says, and David said to Joab and all the people that were with him, rend your clothes and gird you with sackcloth and mourn before Abner. And King David himself followed the bear. So there was a, you know, a funeral for Abner. He had a proper burial. He told, the, he told Joab, you know, hey, look, man, you made a huge mistake. You know, yeah, man, that was that. Yeah, because that that's when your, your brother got killed in war. Y'all were at war. Mm -hmm. Y'all, David was clearly at peace with Abner when you killed him, and then mm -hmm. you did it on some sneak stuff. It ain't like you challenged it to a duel and went mano a mano or something like that. No, 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 no. You come here, man. Let me holler at you, man. It just could, could, could that old small prison shit. Mm -hmm. You know, go ahead. Yep. Um. This is a uh, this was a uh, little excerpt in the uh, thing here. Let me get this actually in the cross reference. There's a little there's a little breakdown on this. I thought it was interesting. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to read this concerning verse 31. It says, uh, David intending no doubt to punish Joab and to lessen his authority with the people. Talking about Joab, David wanted to lessen Joab's authority with the people. He commanded him to take upon him the office of chief mourner. <laughs> so he made, he was like, look, all right, the dude that you killed, you're going to mourn his death at his funeral. And you're going to be the chief. You're going to be the chief, you know, person mourning uh, uh, the guy that you killed. You know, it says, uh, but as his revenge was gratified, uh, his rival was removed and no heavier punishment inflicted. It is probable that his heart and mind would uh, feel but little objection to the ceremony. So, you know, <laughs> Joab was like, all right, man, I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Um, and it says, um, let me see here. Verse 32. And they buried Abner in Hebron and the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner and all the people wept. You know, so he did this publicly to let the people know, you know, what I'm saying, hey, look, I didn't I wasn't trying to I wasn't I didn't want Abner to get put to death. Right. And uh, verse 33, it says, and the king lamented over Abner and said, died Abner as a fool dieth. Thy hands were not bound, nor thy feet put into fetters as a man falleth before wicked men. So fell as thou. And all the people wept again over him. Right. So what this did was a unified, a unified Israel in a time where it could easily be thought or misunderstood that David wanted to divide Israel, that David wanted to basically uh, uh, usurp authority, you know, <clears throat> with under his own or uh, within his own power. But we had we see David mourning for Saul. We see David mourning for Abner. Right. And we're going to read a little bit more. Um, verse 35, it says, and when all the people came to cause David to eat meat while it was yet day, David swear, saying, so do the most high to me and more also if I taste bread <coughs> or aught else till the sun be down. And again, this saying, it comes up a few times, uh, multiple times in the scriptures. What it means is basically let the most high judge me or even or even uh, uh, kill me. If blank, blank, blank. Right. So in this case, David was saying, look, let the most high judge me or or even kill me if I even taste any type of food, any type of bread until the sun go down, because he wanted it to be known. All right. That he it was not of his intention. OK. Uh, to kill Abner or the king or 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 Saul, you know. Well, you know, Saul, he he uh, he died in, in the battle, but he wasn't happy. That um, Saul died. He wasn't happy that Abner had had been put to death, right? And uh, verse thirty six it says, and all the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, as whatsoever the king did pleased all the people. For all the people and all Israel understood that day that it was not of the king to slay Abner, the son of Ner. And the king said unto his servants, Know ye not that there is a prince? And a great man fallen this day in Israel, and I am this day weak. 
though anointed king. And these men, the sons of Zeruiah, be too hard for me. Yahweh Bashim Shai shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. Okay. And nobody's exempt, exempt from that, man. You know, like David, he showed he showed extreme humility. He showed um uh uh that he he didn't want no blood on his hands when it comes to uh you know unrighteous dealings, man. Because the scriptures say uh, uh you know the kingdom of the kingdom is translated from one to another because of what? Unrighteous dealings and 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 riches gotten by deceit. You see? Yep. And Lord, I also, this is another time where the Lord proved that look, if you do, if you obedient to me, then I'll take care of everything else. The same deal he made with Solomon. You know, I give you the next of your enemies, I give you all the women, I give you all these things. Just be obedient. You know, and David, David exuded that. You know, everything that was said that was more wives, more land, more territory, uh, 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 more austere rulership. All those things were given because David was obedient. All those things were taken from Saul because he was disobedient. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep on harping on, harping on the difference between the house of Saul versus the house of David. Why one was successful and why uh, uh, versus why the other one wasn't. That's right. But at, the, but at the end of the day, all Israel are going through these things together. Whether you're the house of the David or the house of Saul, you're still an Israelite. So for the sake of the gospel, we were put at war with each other. Israel was always fighting amongst Israel. Until Yahweh comes back, that curse will not be lifted. Yep. I got a precept um, going into that last verse in, ver in chapter 3. Uh, this is Psalms, and this is a song of David. Um, Psalms 62 and 12. All right. It says... <clears throat> Um, also unto thee, O Yahweh, by Shemiah Shai belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. Right? So, again, man, this is the mindset that David had. And he knew, look, if I try to kill my enemies out of my own, out of my own uh, emotions, then I might get killed by my enemies. You see? And so this is the, this is the reason why we're going into these accounts. So we can know how to respond in real life situations that we're going to be finding ourselves in, in our own walk. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so let me see here. Okay. We can uh, probably breeze through this last chapter. It's, uh, it's uh, only, I think like 12 verses. Yeah. If you want to we can, uh, we can, if you want to go into this, we can. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and knock it out. Okay, cool. All right. This is a uh, <clears throat> second Samuel chapter four. And we see the title here. OK, um, it says in verse one and Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron. Uh, excuse me. And when Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, his hands were feeble and all the Israelites were troubled. You know, so basically Abner didn't he, he didn't get the chance to go back and tell uh, the good news. You know what I'm saying? To, you know the Israelites that he had jurisdiction over. So everybody looking at it as if like, damn, like Abner went to Hebron and got killed and David killed him. That's how they looked at it. You know, um, that's how they looked at it. <clears throat> of course, until they got the news that David, you know, wasn't consenting, but the immediate reaction was, damn, Abner's dead, you know? Um, and so of course, Ishbosheth, he was, he was fearful it says, and Saul's son had two men that were uh, captains of bands. The name of the one was Ba'ana, uh, ba and the name of the other, Rechab, the sons of Ramon, a Ber uh, Berathite, of the children of Benjamin, for Barath also was reckoned to Benjamin. So it's the tribe of, uh, or a family of Benjamin, two sons came out of him, uh, Ramon, uh, excuse me, Bana and uh, Rechab, okay? And uh, basically, they were supposed to be men that were <clears throat> loyal to uh, to Ishbosheth, right? They were captains of Ishbosheth's bands. It says, and the Berathites fled to Gitaim uh, <coughs> and were sojourners there until this day. Okay. It says, uh, and Jonathan, verse four, and Jonathan, Saul's son. Now, this kind of transitions into something else, but it'll make more sense as we continue on. Now, keep uh, in mind. Keep in mind, Samuel 
told Saul that he wouldn't be ruling no more. And that his house, I mean, uh, and his rulership was going to be given to David. It was yep. prophesied that Saul's line was going to be ended. You see? Jonathan's dead. Ishbosheth is murdered right here. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It was a, uh, 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 it was a, it was one more, it was one more child after Jonathan, but he was crippled. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that, so that, that, that's where that line ended. Is right here. Yep. You yep. see, you got it. Yep, con. <clears throat> um, that was prophecy being fulfilled. Yeah. Uh, it says verse four, and Jonathan Saul's son had a son. So this is Saul's grandson or Jonathan's son. Um, and it's, his name was uh, Mephibosheth, but it says, um, and Jonathan, Saul's son had a son that was lame of his feet. And he was five years old when the tidings of Saul came, uh, excuse me. And when the tidings of Saul and Jonathan came out of Jezreel <clears throat> and his nurse took him up and fled. So when you, when you go back to second Samuel, uh, chapter one, or, or I'll say first Samuel chapter 31, when, when uh, you know, Saul basically had died, Saul and, and, and Jonathan had died, you know, little Mephibosheth, he was five years old when this had happened. And um, basically, you know, there was there were several years that had passed when David was king in Hebron. So this is he was still pre pretty much like, you know, an older child, a young man, uh, you know, by the time chapter four come around. But it's going back in time and telling you about this man, Mephibosheth, right? Um, or this boy, Mephibosheth. It says, uh, and, it, and, and his nurse took him up and fled, and it came to pass as she made haste to flee <coughs> that he fell and, and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. Now, um, pretty much, you know, his nurse was uh, scared of, you know, basically the, the Philistines, uh, you know, come in to, you know, infiltrate the city that, that, uh, <clears throat> that, uh, that they were in. So she fled and as, as, she, as she was running or whatever the case was, I don't know if she was holding them or whatever, basically, you know, fell or she dropped them and he injured his legs. Now let's get this, uh, the definition of his name, Mephibosheth. Um, I think it's all at the bottom. Mephibosheth. All right, here we go. Strong's H 4648. Um, let me see here. Mapaya Bashath. <coughs> Mapaya Bashath. Um, and uh the root word here is two root words, pa'a, which is to scatter or to break in pieces or to shatter, to dash in pieces. Um and then Bashath is uh, shame. Okay. So um, it says here exterminating the idol. I'm not really sure about that one. But um, <clears throat> basically, you know, scattering or I'm sorry, uh, shattered in pieces, you know, shame. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's heavy. Due to Saul's lack of faith, his house was shattered. Mm -hmm. um, okay. It says, it says probably dispeller of shame you know yeah so, that's what i'm saying the 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 little crip that's what i'm saying his 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 lineage ended with this little crippled child even though he was raised up by the most high to be the king over all israel yeah wow yeah so it's crazy how not crazy but it's interesting to see how quick the lord can judge those those that are close to us not just us you know our children our family members <coughs> you know um okay so continuing on in verse five it says now this is going back to the main focus of this chapter which is uh ishbosheth <coughs> so like it. it says verse five the sons of ramon the birifite the birithite and rakab uh rakab and bana went and came about the heat of the day which is typically the heat of the day is between noon to like two o'clock. So sometime in that time, sometime in that uh, time period, it says um, to the house of Ishbosheth, who lay on the, on a bed at noon. <clears throat> so it was taking like a day nap or whatever. And it says in verse six, 
and they came thither into the midst of the house as though they would have fetched wheat and smote him under the fifth rib and Rakab and Benan, his brother, escaped. So basically you had two, you know, guys that were supposed to be loyal to, uh, <coughs> they were supposed to be loyal to, to Ishbosheth and they came and killed Ishbosheth in his sleep, you know, in his own bed, in his own house. They just, I mean, something about that fifth rib. Everybody was just, they just had a fifth rib demon on them at this time. They were just like, Ugh. yeah, kill Come shot. On. Yeah. It's just like, that's like, it was like, it's just like, uh, what was that, uh, the fight, the fight over the weekend, Tank Davis mm -hmm. and uh the other boy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He hit it, he hit his ass, he hit his ass up under the fifth rib. That mm -hmm. liver shot. That's what your liver is behind the fifth rib. You know, he, that boy, that, that boy went down like a sack of like a like a, like a, a sack of potatoes, man. Yep. Couldn't get it, couldn't couldn't get back up. So you get punched right there. You know what I'm saying? And it and it and it completely destroys you. Get stabbed right there. You can show hang it up. Yeah, you out of there. You know what I'm saying? And so what happened was they they you know they escaped. <clears throat> and um again, these are men that were supposed to be, excuse me, loyal to to Ishbosheth, you know what I'm saying? They were they were captains of, of a band a band of men, as you know, it could be 20, 100. They were captains of bands of men, <clears throat> and they conspired against uh Ishbosheth and killed him. Okay, it says um Verse seven, for when they came into the house, he lay on his bed in his bedchamber and they smote him and slew him <clears throat> and beheaded him and took his head and got them away through the plain all night. Mm. So not only, not only did they kill him, you know, they they you know, they did him saw style. They were like, oh, look, <clears throat> we're going to cut his head off. And. uh you know, basically uh, show proof. Look, we killed Ishbosheth. Look, look, look what we did. Look what we did. Right. It says uh, <coughs> in verse eight, and they brought the head of Ishbosheth uh, unto David to Hebron and said to the king, behold, the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, thine enemy, which sought thy, uh, which sought thy life. And the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh hath avenged my Lord. The king of this uh this day of Saul and of his seed. So yeah, matter of fact, Balkashah, would you mind speaking out as a quan? I gotta uh get some more water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say it says of Saul and his seed fulfilling their prophecy. Now, David, when 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 David told Saul in that king uh in that cave, he said, Look, man, the Lord is gonna judge between us. At the end of the day, man, I'm not, I'm not I don't want to do you no harm. I refuse, you know what I'm saying? Even though you're trying to kill me, I'm not going that route. You know, you was chosen by the heavenly father. David kept his integrity regarding that situation. Even when Saul was, uh, even when Saul died and, uh, 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 and the, and the guy tried to take credit for it, he had him put to death. You see, David made it clear that it was never his intention to destroy the house of Saul, you know, but when, but when he said that the Lord was going to judge between him and me, he knew that the Lord was going to take care of it. You see, David knew in the spirit that the, that the, uh, that the kingdom had been passed to him. That the crown had been passed to him. Everybody knew it. You see? And the fact that he knew it through the spirit was why he physically wouldn't put his hand to nobody in Saul's house. He also made a promise to Saul and Jonathan that he wouldn't do it. And he kept his word. Yep. <clears throat> he let the Lord deal with that situation wholeheartedly. Yeah. Which shows, which shows like, you know, they still ended up getting judged. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Ultimately, it was uh, men that took it under into their own hands, you know what I'm saying, uh, in, in the intent to, you know, get carnal gain for themselves, which <clears throat> goes back to the scripture, First Timothy, the sixth chapter. You know what I'm saying? The love of money is the root of all evil mm -hmm. because they expected <clears throat> to, you know, get some type of reward, you know what I'm saying, for killing, you know what I'm saying, in which David didn't put a, a bounty, he didn't put a hit on Ishbosheth to say, hey, who, whichever one of you guys get brings me the head of Ishbosheth first, to him will I give, you know, ten talents of silver. He didn't say that. You know, they just went out and did it. <clears throat> you know, uh, presumptuously thinking that they were gonna get some some benefit from it. Right. right? And so uh, this is David's response. 
to those two men. It says in verse nine, and David uh, answered Rakab <coughs> and Benah, his brother, the sons of Ramon, the Berethite, and said unto them, as the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahashah liveth, who hath redeemed my soul out of all adversity. When one told me, saying, behold, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good tidings, I took hold of him and slew him in Ziklag, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings. How much more when the wicked, when wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house upon his bed? <clears throat> Shall I not therefore now require his blood of your hand and take you away from the earth? So David was like, man, how stupid could y'all have been to think that I was going to reward y'all for killing a man that didn't even, <clears throat> he wasn't even trying to seek my own life. When I put to death the dude that said that he, you know, uh, uh, put, uh, even he just, he, he even said that he puts all that he knew he wasn't actually the one who really did it, but he thought, I'm talking about the Amalekite in mm. chapter one, <clears throat> he thought that David was going to uh, give him some type of reward. You know what I'm saying? And um, so, you know, it says uh, in verse 12, and David commanded his young men and they slew them and cut off their hands and their feet and hang them up over the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Isbosheth and buried it in the sepulcher of Abner in Hebron. So David was not playing, man. He like, you know, it was just <clears throat> it was just uh instance after instance where dudes were showing their their you know showing their hand that they were wicked you know what i'm saying david didn't ask these guys to put in the, he didn't ask joab to put abner to death he didn't ask uh rakab and benah to put ishbosheth to death you know what i'm saying but here it is people <coughs> presumptuously assuming or well for their own motives you, you know what i'm saying joab did it because uh to to get vengeance you know what I'm saying? These guys did it for a purse, but it shows that David didn't want none of this to happen. It was all murder. Yeah. You know, which also shows that David is a judge. Right. You know? Right. A, a king, a prophet, a judge, a warrior. He was all those things. Is right. all those things. Mm-hmm. You know? That's right. So that, that was the end of chapter four. Uh, chapter four. Let me see if we have any uh, precepts or anything on here. Let me uh, move this. Um, <clears throat> let me see. First Kings, chapter two. Um, yep. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pretty much, brothers. Uh, <clears throat> putting up good good precepts here. So yeah, that was pretty much uh, the end of that. Let me go back here <clears throat> and see if there's any cross references. Um, good ones here. Let me see. Hang them. Oh yeah, the law. According to the law, talking about uh, uh, hanging. We'll get this and we can close it out. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-one, verse twenty-two. <clears throat> it says, "And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, <laughs> and he be put to death, <clears throat> and and thou hang him on a tree, um, uh, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day." For he that is hanged is a curse of the Most High. <clears throat> so the reason why it's, they, even, it's even a law hanging somebody, man. Mm -hmm. You see, Esau even broke that law. Mm -hmm. You know, leave you up, leave you up for days. Let the birds pluck at you. He don't bury you. Yeah, all those different things, man. Yeah, see, he do everything the opposite. Yep, yep, yep. It says that the land that thy land uh, be not defiled, which the Lord Yahweh. Thy power hath given thee for an inheritance. So, so it says, "He that is hanged is accursed." You know, what I'm saying that's like a you know a punishment, like an open shame, showing, look, hey, we didn't just we didn't just stone this guy. You know, what I'm saying, no, <clears throat> you know, we hanging them so that it could be a publicly made example. You know, what I'm saying not to be like these guys. You know, what I'm saying, and uh, that shows you again that that like you said, Zaquan David was a he was a judge. You know what I'm saying? And, and we coming back into those times where, you know, that swift judgment and those those decisions are going to have to be made, you know, quick. And people are going to start getting judged that same day for their evil deeds, you know. So that's all I had on that.
Khan, all right, and else. Okay, Khan. With that, with that, we want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the I can teach about the mom, my mouth. That's the sincerity and truth. Shalom. Shalom. Most spirit, less flesh. That's right. Raka, Ra'a, Basharma, Ait.